Hey you guys, welcome to my channel. Today is foundation featured and I'm giving you a new launch at the drugstore. It is the Revlon Candid and it is in some very convenient packaging, would you say? Um, yeah, so I found this at Ulta. There are a ton of shades. It was in the $10 range. I was like, good. It's about time foundation at the drugstore isn't $18. <laughs> There are a lot of shades, but I have to say, it was really strange to kind of try to find my shade. So I picked 120 buff, and I'm like, oh, well, you know, um, <clears throat> the one, the one, the 130, I think, was too light, but the 120 was, was just right. So if this ends up being too light, I'll be so darn frustrated because yeah because they had testers and I swatched them and hello so the claims of this foundation are that it is anti-pollution it is a natural finish but I think it is also considered full coverage or medium to full coverage and it, I think it actually has a good rating on Beautypedia for sensitive skin users so yay you get not quite an ounce, 0.75. All right, so I'm gonna shake it up just in case it needs shaking. If you're new here, foundation featured, I apply the foundation one side of my face with a brush, one side of my face with a sponge. I put on powder and concealer and all that good stuff. And then I wear it for the whole day and give you a check in later to see how it wore and give you my thoughts. So. We, uh, we're gonna get going on this. And as you all know, I'm, I'm committed. So if this is the wrong shade, then oh well, we make it work. We've all seen me either ghostly pale or way too tan on my channel. We know how that goes. So I've got my Sonia Kashuk sponge damp and squeezed out. And then I have my Kabuki just flat brush. I'm going to squeeze some. That looks good. That looks like, you know, the right shade. Also, sometimes drugstore, well, sometimes any foundation can oxidize on me. So I find that if I pick a pale shade that matches my neck, especially this time of year, um, and I know that I can kind of look ghostly until I put everything on uh, color wise, but it really is sort of good for me to be kind of more on the pale side. But then when you're covering redness, according to Wayne Goss, he says, go a little on the darker side. So oh, it's a mixed bag. I try to make it work no matter what. But I guess there's enough wiggle room where you can use, you know, if you don't have testers where you're purchasing it from and you wanna just kind of guess, I mean, this 120 is like perfect. I matched it to my neck. That's what I did, is I matched the foundation to my neck when I was in Ulta. And I know that sounds weird, but this way, because I have a lot of pigmentation, this way, oh, I almost messed up and I started putting it on. I'm sorry, I gotta stop talking. So <laughs> this is the side with the sponge. And I just kind of, ooh, I almost kind of put a second layer right there and it sure showed up some coverage. Nice, okay, I'm kind of liking this. I thought maybe for some reason it was more sheer, but this is good. Okay, <laughs> it's so pale. <laughs> you guys. All right, let's see. Let's do the brush side, pretend I didn't cheat. Oh, and also, if I had a third side of my face, I would use fingers because fingers are an entirely different application. Um, and sometimes I've noticed with concealer, when I tap it on with my finger, it really gives a thicker uh, application than the beauty blender, which I know that shouldn't surprise me, but it kind of does. So my first impression of brush versus beauty sponge is I like the beauty sponge better. I feel like it's giving me more coverage. I feel like the brush is kind of pushing the product around and kind of giving more 
of that texture. But I also think it's kind of in the end blending fine. So I think I use less product with a brush than my sponge. And as usual, it kind of doesn't matter which way you apply it because in the end, brush versus sponge, it sort of all mingles. Sometimes there's a difference. Some formulas really, there's a difference. So that is why I do this, but eight out of 10 times, it's pretty much the same. Okay. So it feels good. It's comfortable. It, um, there's no fragrance. It's nice. It has a good um, sheen to it. Let's see if this is, you know, something that will wear through the day. I usually get breakdown right on my chin area, my nose area. So we'll see if uh, we get that. It's a little bit, um, it's not really going in the pores. Let's look in my mirror real close here. Yeah, it's good, not bad. I'm gonna mix things up and I know I haven't used this in a long time. This is the Milk Concealer. Um, it's a little bit peachier. I just feel like I have been having, I, I wanna revisit some of the concealers that I have because I have a lot and it seems like there's always a new one being launched. And I have my favorites, which you've seen, but I'm like, oh, maybe I need to try some others, you know. Okay, I am going to today, you guys, I have forgotten I had this. I should do an entire video of forgotten makeup, but this is the Mehron setting powder. Um, it is kind of an industry standard. It's kind of like our CMA and it's just very basic. It's transparent, translucent, and you know, it's just a good setting powder. Um, I have my favorites as well in this category that I don't often, uh, that I'm using most of the time, but I feel like this one is kind of a bargain and it's good. And yeah, so I figured should get it out and this is my I want to say I got it on Amazon for like three dollars it's my giant it cosmetics powder brush dupe um, or did I get it from eBay I think I got it from Amazon God bless Amazon okay so I'm just I'm not baking I'm just doing a soft dusting of powder everywhere and then we shall see my final face look I will do for us off camera <laughs> and then get back to you so photo candid photo ready photo, photo ready candid so far so good Alrighty, I am all made up and ready to face the day. I've got um, some fun glitter and gold for, you know, parent meetings and uh, running errands. So, so far the foundation is doing a nice job. I don't think it broke down with any of the other products I applied. I put on some bronzer, blush, highlight, that kind of thing. So it has been behaving itself. Is that a little bit of fallout? What is that? I don't know, I'm making it worse. Oh well. And yeah, so I think it's a good match. I really do, you guys. What do you think? So it's nice and it says it's photo ready. Let's see. I'm gonna use flash, something I never do. And I'm going to take a picture. 
<laughs> okay, I'm blind, so give me a second. So with flash, okay. So here is without flash. Can you see that? Looks really natural. I think it looks good. I know it's kind of weird to show you a photo. And then I think flash is a little white. Not like, I mean, that could be the powder. Maybe that's the Mehron. I don't think so. It's regular. It shouldn't have like flashback. Um, so it's, it is definitely more white, but maybe that's just because of flash. And I have a lot of lights on right now, but I don't think that there's, um, it doesn't look like it's a, it's a ghost. It doesn't look Like my skin looks fine, just brighter, you know, just like under a flash, but not weird and white kind of, you know, when, um, yeah, when it looks like everything else is tan and then you have this white mask. So I don't think it's, it's, you know, but good to know, right? Right. So maybe if you are in an event and you want to wear this, um, or you're, you know, when you're actually, that's a good rule of thumb, no matter what, um, when you know, you're going to have a lot of flash photos taken, uh, go like a half shade warmer or so in your foundation and your shades, add a little bronzer, just because it's going to give a glow that the flash will kind of kill if you didn't. Make sense? Okay. Alrighty guys, I will see you in at least six hours to give you my evening checkup where I will look, my evening checkup, my check-in where I will look bedraggled and somewhat faded, but we will find out what we think of this foundation. See you then. Alrighty folks, I am back. It is, it is eight hours later, nine hours later. I have been to um, I've walked the dog, I've run errands, I've taken my daughter to an appointment, and I took my son to urgent care tonight. He's fine. He had to get cleared for a concussion from school, and yeah. So here we are. But my foundation has remained pretty flawless. I am enjoying the results. I think this wears really well. I don't feel like anything's in my pores dramatically or creasing or worn. Um, this part right here looks still nice and smooth. A lot of times that will get kind of textured. Um, this part definitely is where I usually get like breakdown of, you know, like where it looks like the little pore pin dots and that's doing pretty well. And my light is way over there. That's why it's dark. Um, also because it's like eight o'clock at night. Um, and my chin is a little bit, if you looked closely, you could see that, you know, it's a little bit broken down. My forehead though has stayed nice and smooth and that's important because heck. And yeah, my concealer's done a good job too. Well, yeah, okay. So all in all, this candid foundation, where are you? This candid foundation is pretty good. Um, yeah, so it's nice that there is a good shade range at Ulta. They have the testers. I'm not sure if every drugstore unit has the testers, but you know. Um, so there you go. I approve. I like it. Well, thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you subscribe to my channel. Please be sure to give that thumb a, a thumbs up, a press. You know what I mean. Share this video with your friends. Tell your family at Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh my God. Alrighty, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time, bye.